On the 25th of May 2009, Cyclone Isla hit southern Bangladesh. Overnight, it flooded and destroyed the homes of 750,000 people. Sanitation systems collapsed and widespread flooding contaminated fresh water supplies. In all, this single storm affected more than three and a half million of the world's poorest people. And current research suggests that if climate change continues, severe events like this could become more frequent. So our understanding as it stands at the moment is that the, the sea surface temperatures are rising and there's a very clear link between increasing temperatures of the oceans and what we've been doing to the climate through emissions of greenhouse gases. Uh, and that is having a tendency to make, um, when, to make more intense tropical cyclones. And the climate models in the future project an increasing frequency of the most intense tropical cyclones. Like all cyclones, Isla began as a tropical thunderstorm. These form when intense heating of warm, humid air causes updrafts, resulting in the formation of tall cumulonimbus clouds associated with extremely heavy rain. To turn into cyclones, tropical thunderstorms need a continual supply of energy in the form of warm, moist air. And that's only available where sea temperatures reach 26 and a half degrees. It's also why, as this map shows, tropical cyclones, or hurricanes and typhoons, can only form in a narrow band, 10 degrees either side of the equator. And if global sea temperatures increase, the conditions tropical cyclones need to form are going to become much more common. But climate change is also affecting weather patterns in other ways, and the impacts aren't always negative. Olafur Egertsen is pressing oil from rapeseed grown on his farm in southern Iceland. His family have been farming sheep and cattle here for five generations. But changes in climate have enabled him to grow rapeseed commercially for the first time. And that's not the only way crops in Iceland are changing. With warmer climates, of course, there are uh, some things that you can grow that, that, that were harder to grow. And, and in the last uh, decades, uh, grain production has increased in Iceland quite substantially. So that, and that is a response to the warming, basically. Climate change might be helping farmers like Olafur to diversify. But in other parts of the world, the impacts are very different and it's the least resilient communities that are usually hit the hardest. Climate is, is affecting different parts of the world differently. Potentially even it may in some regions be easier to, to grow crops, for example, in some parts of the world, um, potentially at least, but, but in other parts of the world, um, you know, particularly like, like regions already prone to drought, are getting more prone to drought and therefore it's becoming then much more challenging to, to have enough water. And one of the unfortunate consequences of climate change really is that those places that are already most vulnerable to weather um, under climate change, because it's changing the weather, they're the ones being affected most. In recent decades, droughts have become increasingly common in East Africa. In the last major rainy season, this area received rain only for five days. So the ponds are not storing enough water, not enough pasture is growing and the crops are failing. If the natural resource is not doing good, the livestock cannot survive. And if the livestock cannot do good, the people cannot survive. In 2010-11, two rainy seasons failed in a row. And research by the UK Met Office says the failure of these rains was due to the impacts of greenhouse gases and other human factors on climate. 